Welcome to Rick's Corner. It's the day after Christmas. Here in California, it's around, I don't know, 55 degrees, which is actually cold for us. I'm kind of cold today, but uh, the sun is out. It's a beautiful day. Christmas came and went like it does every year, and you do your thing and you eat your stuff, and I celebrated both Christmas and Hanukkah, so I had a lot of goodies around. I tried not to eat too many, but I went back to the gym today. I was up a couple of pounds, and I figured, okay, I'm going to watch my diet back now for this week. Anyway, I want to talk about videos. I want to talk about pumping iron and back in the day of uh, the Venice Beach Gold because in those days, thinking back, there were no video cameras. All we had is like these little brownie cameras that held, you know, film and, and that was it. Um, the ones that had the video cameras were the, the movie studios and the commercial auditions that had the big RCAs, the big lens on it. And so you couldn't really lug those around because you had to carry a, a VCR with you and it was a whole process, you know, it was just a whole process to tape anything. But we did get a lot of people in the gym who wanted to do films and documentaries and pieces in the gym, professional film crews, and of course you very rarely ever got a piece of that. I was in one day and Candace Bergen, if you remember Candace Bergen, her dad was Edgar Bergen, who was a ventriloquist with Charlie McCarthy back in those days. She worked for one of the news teams, one of the major channels, doing research for certain things. So she came in the gym. She says, I need to shoot some pictures of somebody working out. She says, do you mind? What is your name? I said, I'm Rick Drazen. She says, do you mind if I shoot you doing some different exercises? I said, no, I don't mind at all. So she took a lot of pictures. She was a photographer as well. Never got to see them. Never got copies of them. I don't even know where to find them. But um, I would have loved to have those as well to show on this show, but they just weren't available. Well, later on, Pumping Iron came around. Now, Pumping Iron was done by um, uh, some people that came. They, I, I know the people. They, I still see one of them today. Uh, they wanted to shoot the documentary. They had a, a budget to shoot it. They were, didn't have really a script, but they had a thing in mind that they wanted to do about the Olympia, about Arnold, how he would tease Ferrigno, how Waller would be an antagonist, and Mike Katz would be the butt of some jokes. This was the main guys they wanted to get into the film. People had asked me, Rick, why aren't you in Pumping Iron? Well, I had a couple of reasons I wasn't in it. I was there at the time. Now you have to remember, I was training as a bodybuilder, but I was training for wrestling as well. So I was wrestling at nights, and I was booked almost six nights a week. And some of those days I had to travel. I had to leave at two or three in the afternoon. I wasn't available to film, number one. If they would have made me a decent offer, I would have done it. But I wasn't competing for the Olympia. I saw no reason for me, me to be in it. And um, therefore, when Arnold had called me, he says, look, I know you're a professional guitarist and we'd love to have you come down and play some songs on film. You know, we'll tape it and we'll put it in the movie. I said, well, okay, Arnold, we're both a member of Screen Actors Guild. I made money selling, you know, playing guitar. Am I going to be compensated for my time? Because I had to take time off wrestling and forget a paycheck that night and be paid for the film as well so I can make up the difference in money. He says, no, he says, uh, we can't afford to pay you. However, he was getting paid. So I said, well, then I don't think it's feasible. I can't do this and give up a, a booking just to come and sit and play guitar on it, if I might be in the film or not. And it didn't really matter to me because I wasn't competing for the Olympia anyway. So people ask me this question, why weren't you, why weren't you? And I did think I was in one scene walking through the gym, but that doesn't matter anyway, I don't care about that. Um, it was a good movie, I mean, I enjoyed it t tremendously. And uh, I competed in a couple of contests, maybe three or four, Arnold went with me, he was my judge on one, I think, uh, in San Pedro, as a matter of fact. But I never got the satisfaction out of competing that I got out of wrestling. And I'm sure some of you will understand this. I have trophies in the garage. They're kind of half broken, they're dusty, and they don't mean a whole lot. I mean, they were for the time. But to work for a trophy and to train real hard for a trophy and train to make a living at bodybuilding is pretty next to impossible. Arnold did it, he had a goal, and he did it, and he made it, and we know what he did, and he achieved everything. Ferrigno did it, and he had a goal, but he also became the Hulk, which was a paying gig, okay? Those guys knew that they could move on to something else. I knew that I could move into wrestling. I knew that I could move into films and commercials, and that was where going to be my money, my income came from. To do a contest and get a, a, an endorsement from somebody at the time to pay you to do something just doesn't happen. Even to this day, it's difficult. The guys that win the big contest, they, they get a little bit of money, and then you know, then it's gone in a year. And then what? And then you got to know next year. There's no, there's no predicted future that you're going to have a living the rest of your life as a bodybuilder. However, with wrestling, I did. So I did the both. I figured, you know, pumping iron is what it is. I was with the guys. I trained just like the guys. They had the bodies just like the guys. I had the same thing everybody had, but my, my form of enjoyment was in the ring. That's why you didn't see me in pumping iron. I can't take off to go do this, and, and it just wasn't going to work for me. 
So I wanted to answer that question, and um, I wished I would have had a, a video camera back then because I've mentioned this before, and I can only explain who these people are. But all gyms have characters, and Gold's had the dominant characters of Arnold and all of his guys together, and then Joe Gold called the other guys the background players. Those are the people in the gym that weren't part of the mainstream, but they were characters within themselves. They were individuals. They had good personalities. They had funny things about them. A lot of them had good bodies, never competed. There were plenty of guys that could have competed in one contest. They just didn't. They just wanted to work out. Same way today, as you know. You see people in the gym, they work out hard, they can compete in a contest, but it's not their desire to go be judged by somebody. You, you know, when you're in a contest and you're judged by somebody, it's their opinion. That doesn't mean you're bad if you don't win. It's just their opinion. They might have a favorite that they like even better than you, and, you know, that's it's the way it goes. So rather than put yourself in a situation to be judged by somebody who doesn't really care about you and someone else gets it because they like them, I never liked that. I knew that wrestling I was going to be booked. I knew I was going to get a paycheck. <laughs> For me, that's what it was all about. And it was still showing your body in the ring and a different, pers and a, and a different performance. Um, that's just how it works. And like I said, if I would have had a video camera back then, I, I just don't. I would have had so much footage to share with you guys. I would have gone crazy. When my son Adam was born in 1979, I wanted to get some video of him. That's when video cameras or video machines first came out. I was training at World Gym with Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong, and I told Tommy, I said, do you have a camera I can borrow? He says, yeah, actually I do. He had one of those big RCA cameras like I'd mentioned. And so I went out and I shot my son in the crib and out of the crib and around the beach and then some other stuff, and then I gave him the camera back about a month later. The problem I had was I, I put it on a Quasar machine, which was one of the first video machines that ever came out, and that was a big cassette. I have those two cassettes in my garage, and there's nowhere I can actually transfer them because no one has the format for that tape in order to take my pictures off of it. So they're kind of stuck out there in my garage. I haven't seen them since 1979, I probably never will. But that's too bad, that's just how it happened. Anyway, that's my reason for not being in Pumping Iron. I know they did a remake of it, I saw it, I really enjoyed everything I saw, and it was really hyped up to be entertaining, you know, with the Arnold and the, and the Ferrigno thing and the Colt Waller thing. They made a little storyline out of it, and they made it, they shot it as they went. Like I said, it wasn't a script. If you guys do this and come up with what you want to come up with and make it funny, and that's the way things were done back in the 70s. They were done very loose. I'd go into an audition, they'd give me a script, and I said, I can't read that script, that's not in my words. Well, put it in your own words and see how it comes out. So I did, and it always felt more comfortable to do it the way I would do it. And that's what they did with Pumping Iron as well. Anyway, I wanted to explain that. This is the week between Christmas and New Year's. I don't think I'll do another show unless I decide to sit down and talk about something. But Happy New Year, and remember the first of the year, start training hard again. Uh, go back on the tight diet, get in good shape. But this week, enjoy yourself. And I love you guys. Thanks for watching Rick's Corner. I'll see you next time.